Hey everybody, this is Captain for One Reporting for Duty, giving you my weekly comic book review. So sit back and enjoy. All right, everybody, for those of you that know the drill, I go over a bunch of comic books for the week that I chose to read. Now, I didn't have time to read everything, so if I miss something you think I should have read, let me know in the comments below. Also, you may disagree with me on some of my choices. If that's the case, that's all right. Let me know below. Let's just try to keep it civil. My goal is to bring back the old school yard days, you know, where we would be in discussing what hero could be who or what comic book was good and not. And I come armed with my trusty notes so you'll hear the paper rattle because I do it a little bit old school. I do my grading on a scale of 0 through 10. 7 being average as a 70%. So I'm using school yard grading. But that's not all. I also use the League of Comics Geeks to give you other people's views as well as a brief overview of the comic book as well so let's jump right in all right so let's see here the first one i want to talk about maybe i should get my glasses so i can actually read my notes here because yeah i'm old school i use my notes right <laughs> this amazing spider-man issue number 41 80 out of 101 liked it with a 3.3 average rating on league of comics geeks well i gave it a 7.5 Actually, yeah, not too far off. The writer is Zeb Wells. The penciler is John Romita Jr. Is this series enough to make up for all the crap of Spider-Man that we've had lately? Well, that's up to you. But Gang War continues. And I am enjoying the Gang War uh, storyline. As a matter of fact, I like the fight here that we have with Tombstone and Kingpin. But I do think the Typhoid Mary was written a little weird in this one. I'd like to know your opinion. Do you think Typhoid... I know Typhoid Mary's a nut, but it just seemed a little out of there but it was good action it really was a fun issue it's it's been an up step in the spider-man i think they got to stay away from all that other crap in the past recently to make this book continue to be good now this next one i don't know people are liking it but i'm not and that's venom number 29 49 out of 52 liked it with a 4.1 average rating by al ewing and artist kafu Sedati Brock's tour de force continues while chaos has reigned for Dylan Brock and the Venom symbiote. And Eddie Brock continues to kick butt and take no prisoners, fighting like heck to get back to them. But Eddie started as the, the King in Black and has gone on a transformation journey where he has to put Meridius' very existence into a state of uncertainty. And there's the thing, I just don't care about that whole storyline. It just doesn't do it for me. The art's good. But I just can't get into this story, but it seems like others have been. I think my opinion on this book really does go against the grain, but I found this issue to be very boring. A lot of talk, and I think it's once again stemming from, I just don't care about this storyline. Are you enjoying this version, this take on the character? It just doesn't do it for me. Maybe I'm missing something. You hear me clicking? <laughs> These are unedited. They're not scripted. And that's just my thoughts on that. I think it's a miss. The next one I want to talk about is Birds of Prey. Uh, there's some interesting covers for this one, too. Nothing too fantastic, but 143 out of 154 with a 3.9 average rating for League of Comics Geeks. It's coming out pretty strong. Kelly Thompson is the writer and artist and colorist is artist D as, as art. Artist DN. Sorry, dude. Can the birds and the Amazons save sin as the birds and the Amazons double their efforts in fighting well, let's just say everything under the sun over there. Can they save Sin? Well, here's the thing. I, I didn't care for this art style very much. It's just, I don't know, it was okay. But it has a decent story and decent pacing. So I gave it a 7 out of 10. Nothing spectacular. I'm sort of, I'm hoping better from a Birds of Prey series. Maybe I'm judging it too harshly. Hmm, that might be a theme this week. <laughs> the next one I want to jump to is Captain America. As I mentioned previously in the last issue, I thought the art has had a step down, but it's not terrible. We'll put it that way. League of Comics Geek said 64 out of 70 liked it with a 3.9 average rating. I gave the book a 7.8. 
Yeah, pretty strong. J. Michael Straczynski is continuing with the writing, and we have the artist Lan Badena, which I probably butchered the name. New information about Captain America's recent attacker, a mysterious figure known only as the Emissary, has Steve Rogers, Misty Knight, and Sharon Carter scrambling to protect a peace rally from being the new foe's next target. But how can the masters of physical and mental might defend against the supernatural prowess of an ancient evil? That's a darn good question. Captain America, I think, has written pretty well in character in this issue. It's an interesting story. The doll with with uh, Doctor Strange's uh, odd twist, but it's okay. And it has okay art. I gave the book a 7.8. I thought this one was bad. I know I'm Captain America biased, but I think, if anything, I'm actually extra hard on Captain America in most cases based on my liking of the character. And speaking of one that maybe is a little divisive, let's talk about Batman 141. 228 out of 240 liked it with a 4.1 average rating on League of Comics Geeks, which shows a pretty good uptick from where the book has been. Chip Zdarsky is the writer, artist is George Jimenez. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but people are starting to get into this, uh, getting past some of the things in the previous several issues. We have, it says, the stunning conclusion to Mind Bomb. I don't know, I don't really feel like it was a conclusion, to be honest with you, but. Okay, that's what they say it is. Zenonara has done the unthinkable and now cut off from everything and everyone, Batman has to face off against his most devastating enemy in a brutal fight for the future as the specter of the Joker hangs over everything. Yeah, there's an interesting conclusion in this issue. The, the ending, last couple of pages are pretty cool, which I have to say I did enjoy. I gave the book a 7.4, not quite as high as they did, but I think it's because maybe the art. I think it's an okay art. Some people love this style, I just don't. And I, as I said, I wasn't a very big fan of this whole Zer thing, but this issue wasn't so bad. I thought it was pretty interesting overall. Uh, you know. I don't know. Do you think Batman's getting some redemption here, getting a little better, or do you think it's just a temporary relief? I don't know. Hey guys, today's video is sponsored by My Wallet. Yeah, I'm not trying to push any kind of wallet or pimp any wallet out. What I mean is, it's sponsored by my personal wallet and the cash that comes out of it to pay for these things. If you want to help with this, you can hit like, subscribe, that notification bell. Those are great ways to get started. But if you find yourself in a position where you can help the channel more, we have a Patreon and a subscribe star down below that you can click on those links. And for as little as a dollar a month, you'll have special videos and things to just you, like music that you can get, or maybe if you wanted to, a one-time donation just to help out. We have a Streamlabs link down below. Or we also have, if you go to the Patreon shop, you could buy a song for like $3. I wish I could put them a little lower, but that's the minimum they allow for that. So there's lots of options. Sometimes you might even see an Amazon link. If you want to buy anything through Amazon, click on my link first, then go through there. That'll give me a couple pennies, possibly that way too as well. So there's lots of ways you can help out the channel, because without you, it would not be possible. So thank you, everybody. And let's get back to the video. Now this next one, I once again realize a lot of people don't want to read just because the writer and I get that. So usually what I do with this case of this sign of situations, I just read it at the comic shop. If I get permission from one of my people I know there. And this is Shazam number seven with 118 out of 127 liking it with a 3.9 average rating. The writer is, of course, Mark Wade and artist Goran Sadizuka, which once again, I butchered that name. We have the Captain vs. Black Adam, sort of. Yeah, actually, the issue starts with a doppelganger of Shazam. You'll see why. Pretty good, interesting fight. We don't get a whole lot of Captain uh, Marvel, or the Captain now, I should say, versus Black Adam, but we're gonna probably get more next issue. So that should be interesting. I think it was a fun issue. A decent art. Uh, the silliness of the scenes in this and this issue set it apart from a lot of the other DC books, and it just works. Uh, you know, going back a little bit to the classics of the character in the first place in that time period, it just seems to work. I gave the book a 7.4. Uh, if you can get past the writer, go ahead and get it. If not, hey, I get that as well. The next one I want to talk about is a new number one, which was really not needed. I think we could have just continued with the numbering, but that is Vengeance of the Moon Knight number one. It's a direct continuation of the Moon Knight series with 162 out of 162 liking it. With a 4.5 average rating on League of Comics Geeks, Jed McKay seems to be off to a good start with the artist Alessandro Capac Chio, sorry, dude. I butchered your name. So people, a lot of people there are cheering. Yeah, they're cheering for this book. It seems like I gave the book a seven. I didn't give it quite as high of a score, but we have a, an is interesting issue here. The group, the 
a cast of characters from the Moon Knight series are taking over the Midnight Mission and continuing on. No, the vampire, she is not replacing Moon Knight. Okay, but I think she's an interesting character as well. But the thing is, did Mark Spector come back? Did the Moon Knight come back? Well, you have to read the sea. It's good art and it's an okay story so far. But I do ask, why do we need a number one? I get it why they do that. They now like to do that to relaunch this title, get more you know, uh, attention or when they change writers and things. I just don't think that's a needed thing. None other than to drum up short term sales. But I will say this, it's an interesting issue and I am definitely looking forward to the next. I know some of my fan, uh, viewers and things like that are not big Moon Knight fans and I get it, but I'm telling you this series has actually been pretty darn good. I've been appreciating it a lot. Now this next one, <laughs> uh, I don't know, I think I might have actually, uh, it might have came out last week, I'm not sure. I didn't get it then, but I picked it up now and that is Duke. Uh, I'm not gonna go too much in detail of Duke, but my thoughts on this, just in case, is I gave it an eight out of 10. If you're not reading Duke, I strongly suggest getting Duke. It's a great way to con uh, combine a universe with this, but not depend on characters in a universe to actually make it successful. And the art style, I think, is pretty good. Decent art, good story. I think it's a must read though for any G.I. Joe fan. Matter of fact, 253 out of 256 with a 4.4 average rating on League of Comics Geeks. That's pretty darn strong for G.I. Joe. Joshua Williamson's the writer, artist of Tom Riley. We have Conrad Hauser has made first contact with an alien being uh, be, being and he actually lived to tell about it you could read about that in the transformers as you see what happens there but no one not even colonel hawk believes the story of the jet fighter starscream converting into a colossal alien robot nearly killing the man known as duke and killing one of duke's friends now one of the u.s army's most decorated soldiers is on the hunt for answers drawn into conflict that no amount of training could ever prepare for, a war that only a real American hero has any chance of surviving. So while Duke is looking into this, he discovers Destro and what's going on there. I think this is a good setup, a good story. Really, I enjoyed this one. This is one I strongly suggest that anybody take a chance on and pick up. Well, those were what I read this week. What should I read? What I miss? What do you think? What were your thoughts? Am I wrong? That's okay too. Share our views. As I said, that's what makes this special. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I appreciate it. I know my videos have been a little uh, less in production lately. I haven't been putting out as much. Uh, one of them I'm working on. I have to do some reshoots. Some of the video for some reason got corrupted for a product review. So it's taken a little longer to get done than what expected. Plus the holiday season slow be down. I'll admit I took a little bit of time away. I just needed some time. Thank you everybody. Once again, you're all amazing. Until next time. Keep it frugal.